restaurants in the water. Uh, we went uh, and then his um, boat. What? Uh, what's that? What's that one up on? We have several. Is it Rosebud? Yeah, yeah. this yeah. Gordon's boat. Uh, we yeah. went across. Yeah. 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 Were you here yeah. last yeah. meeting? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Air, yeah. Underwater. Yeah. yeah. Ready? Carolyn wasn't here. Yeah, I came in. Because there was just a few of us. Yeah. We voted. I don't know if we really could or not. Right. But there was nothing official to, yeah. to really vote about. Ready to go? <coughs> like to call to order the uh, June 20th, 2022 Washington Historic Preservation Commission meeting. Roll call, please. Carolyn Witt. Steve Struber. Here. Ryan Bogue. Here. Rick Hoff. Here. Jamie Holtmeyer. Here. Andrew Cleary. Tyler King. Bill Holtmeyer. Here. Here. Val Maniachi. Here. And JC Lopez, who is our new building official, but he won't be here tonight. Uh, please rise for a pledge of allegiance. <clears throat> In our packet, we had the minutes from the last meeting, which was May 16th. Um, entertain a motion for approval. I'll make a motion. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, moving along, new business. Uh, we've got a couple design reviews uh, for uh, 14 West Main Street, the east end of the building. And Sal, can you kind of? Yeah, we'll give, I know we, we were explaining via email what was going on there, um, but that's why there's two items on the agenda tonight. The first is actually request for a design review for the east end of the building of 14 West Main, which is um, commonly known as the, the former Missourian building. Um, they had previously gotten an internal demo permit, um, and the reason we hadn't seen anything here is there hadn't been a permit to be reviewed. Obviously, as, as you all know, we don't review internal um, permits. Uh, and then they had moved forward with um, some of the external um, changes, and that's when Jamie reached out and said, hey, we got to put that on pause until we go through this process. Uh, and then just, again, to be clear, um, we have the mandatory review, voluntary compliance, and until or unless public funds are requested, which at this time they have not. Um, but when we were reviewing the plans, they have some longer-term plans for the rest of the lot, and so we thought maybe now would be a good time to just start that discussion and give some early, um, early recommendations from the commission since they are still in design. And so the first item, um, again, is for that Easter end, just the existing building, um, some changes to the windows, doors, um, they'll see an industrial awning. And then the second is for just the discussion of it, but I thought to be easier since the renderings, they have the better renderings and can show more detail. Um, we've plugged in their computer and they have a whole presentation that they can do. So unless there's any questions of me, I can turn it over to the applicant. All right. Thank you. First off, thank you so much for having us. I'm very, very excited to show you what we've got planned. Um, history is so very important to us. My name is Chad Greifey. I'm working with my brother Dale Greifey and um, his wife Lisa Greifey. Um, so we're definitely family owned and operated. So what I wanted to do today was just kind of show you what we've got planned for the buildings, um, for the entire building with some of the different businesses and um, what we've got kind of planned for the design and then um, take any questions and after that. Um, so the first thing is just uh, that we want to create a space for games, drinks, food and entertainment. Um, it's much needed in this area. Mm -hmm. um, we all have years of hospitality, construction, and design. Um, with this experience, the owners can ensure the operations will be efficient, and we want to provide, uh, provide our customers with an experience we'll never forget with over 20,000 square foot of space in beautiful downtown Washington, and we're going to walk you through some of that today. Um, the alley on the old Missourian building, as we like to call it, just the old Missourian building, or sometimes the Death Star. Um, it's a historic <laughs> site um, with parts of the building dating back to the 1860s, um, and we want to honor that space and return it to its former glory even better than ever. Um, the alley that we're calling it, and that's our full design inspiration, is in between two historic sections of the building. So as you look at the front of the building, there's a garage door. There's That was one building, and then it's another building, and all they did was just put a little roof on top and put that garage door. So when you're walking through it, it 
feels like you were in an alley from years and years and years ago. Um, that's our main entrance. That's where all of our customers will come in and out of that main entrance, and it's our strongest inspiration. Um, we want to keep almost all the original structure interwoven within. Um, inside this alleyway, there's these beautiful arched windows that are all with that original brick. We want to maintain that. We want to keep that. Um, and then we even there's parts where bricks have broken off. And instead of replacing those bricks, um, we want to just fill in clear epoxy into those spots. So even those spots that are broken off where you can kind of see into it, it would still be nice and finished off, but you can still see those original bricks that were placed from the early 19, late 1800s. Um, if you've been to the foundry in St. Louis, uh, they did a lot of that with their flooring. You can see the old brick, but it's just through a clear layer of epoxy. Um, that way it's still not dangerous for people to walk by. You don't have chunks of brick falling in people's food, but yet you're still honoring that history of that building. Um, we also want to incorporate the fact that the building was used for many years as the main hub for the Missourian. I think that's what a lot of us know it as. That's a lot of us remember it as um, for the Missourian. So we want to maintain that history with lots of old tools that we are finding as we are demoing and cleaning some things out. We are using that as part of the design. There's a cool machine that wraps paper around old newspapers and it's just this old crank machine that we want to incorporate that with the ribbon coming through and coming in and out of the walls. Um, the alley will appear as if you're walking along a European alleyway with cobblestone pathways, street lamps, and street signs. So part of, uh, here's a picture that we see here. So when you're walking down this alleyway, those arched windows that you see there on the right, those are what is currently there right now. So um, they're just, of course, boarded up and, and, and you could tell with bricked up, you know, years later. So we're going to be removing those. Those are going to be areas where people can either go into a bakery, a coffee shop. They can order food from there. We will be selling things out of there ourselves so people can actually interact with those windows. And then on um, the other side, um, my left, uh, your right, is going to be the farmer's market, which is, I know what we're looking at and is the main focus for today on the Andes uh, produce. Um, those windows that you see there, those were all behind drywall and stud walls. We removed those and found these really beautiful windows that were original to the structure. We have sanded down every single one of those, reprimered them, repainting them, putting in new glass to all of those. So those were original to the building, which for us was just so cool. And it fits the design aesthetic that you see now on every single HGTV show. So it really worked well for what we were wanting. Um, this is as you're walking down the alleyway, turning around and looking back. So we will have some new glass doors on that main entrance, um, but still keeping that facade um, that you see um, uh, from the original building. Um, that's where you can order your food, which I've already covered some of those things. Um, and then this is looking in the grocery store of Andy's um, Produce Farmer's Market. Um, we did add some accordion style um, doors, so that way she can push those all the way to one side. Her produce can empty and go out into the parking lot. She can be selling things out of that parking lot, as well as people can walk in and they can buy their produce through there. She will have a cooler, um, a very, very large walk-in cooler that she can keep a lot of her stuff um, fresh. Um, so that's what we're looking at with that. That wall, that gray wall that you see along there, that we are not touching. We are leaving that exactly the way it is. Um, you, there's still ink stains on them from when the Missourian was in there. And we're not planning on doing anything to, to change that or mess around with that. We want to keep that original um, wall from, from all those years of being a newspaper. Um, we are going to be having rental space. So we, have as you know, have already working out a lease with um, Andy's Produce, but we're also talking with Underground's Coffee that would like to work with us with selling coffee, also brick oven pizza and selling that, as well as Langatang Barbecue in New Haven. They would like to come over and be selling barbecue out of that, um, that, that other areas. Um, so a lot of this stuff will be done on your phone. You can put your orders in online and then just go pick it up at the window. Um, and then we'll also have um, in the railroad park, which is going to be further on for your discussion, um, other tenants in those spaces um, with uh, shared kitchens that can come in and sell food out of those spots, as well as vendors, snow cones, you know, whatever. Um, and that's going to be more of your seasonal weather because that will all be outdoors. Um, one of the things we're going to be selling out of that is alcohol. 
um, but we've got the self pour system. So when people come in, they'll get a give us a credit card, their ID, we swipe it, they get a key fob on the wrist, and then they just swipe it in front of the beer taps or the cocktail taps, and they just are charged per ounce. So they can have just a taste of something, they can go down the line and taste a bunch, or if they really like something, they can go ahead and do a full 12 ounce um, pour of whatever they're looking for. Um, we will also have a robot bartender, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, yes we will. Um, so if there's something pretty basic, like a Jack and Diet or something that we might not have options for that, then we have that as well. Um, we will have three separate spaces, a 21 and up area, a family space, and a kids space. So every, from eight to 80 is what we're looking for for this um, space. Um, very, uh, all, all different types of games and entertainment. Um, the family room area will have a 3D sports simulator as uh, well as other analog games. And then the space upstairs, we're looking as a major attraction for um, uh, arcade. And then uh, our big one is going to be our free roam virtual reality. Also tables all around with board games that are all electronic board games. Uh, thing called duck pin bowling, which is just like regular bowling, but much smaller. <laughs> so it's a lot easier for people who can't pick up a regular bowling ball, um, but it just makes it for a lot more fun. And this is that free room virtual reality, and that'll be on our entire top floor. Um, and essentially, you put on the headset, run around this room, and what you see in the headset is uh, whatever the situation might be. Um, we went and played it, and it was a lot of fun. Um, we think this is going to be something that the, the families and kids and definitely a lot of adults will enjoy in this area. Um, and then the sports simulator, where you can not just play golf, but also soccer, baseball, archery, football, and 30, 40 other games that you can play with that. Um, Spitball Charlie, uh, kind of a local legend, has reached out to us um, and is very interested in doing pool leagues. Um, in fact, he is willing to come in and do show tricks and what he can do, and then also he's willing to run the pool league. So we want to create a space for him in the 21 and up area um, that is for pool tables, and he said that he would run that league and, and take care of that. So we want to um, have a space for him um, because there, I didn't even realize myself that there was a pool hall that um, hasn't existed in a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the east end of the building, which I know is what we were talking about for review tonight. Um, the accordion style doors that you can see there, that is gonna be Andy's entrance. Those, they have a, uh, the big door there, and then also just a man door there. Um, right now we put a mural on there um, that Spitball Charlie has actually um, submitted for when I was in the Arts Council for um, there, that uh, mural that is Welcome to Washington mural. Um, so we took that, just a picture of that and put that there. We're not saying that's gonna be the actual mural, uh, a mural I would love to do is something that incorporates the Missourian, um, something that shows the history of Washington going through the printing press, and on the other side we see more of the future of Washington. We are still not sure what this mural is going to look like, um, but we would like to have some kind of a mural that goes right along that entire side um, of the building. And then this is looking at the front of the building, um, so you see that main entrance for our guests, and then of course that um, uh, other side of it is then the railroad park. Um, for the railroad park, it's such a vital part of Washington's history. Um, this is our chance to pay homage to the railroad that has given so much industry and tourism to our town. The outdoor space will be a railroad park. This will be located on the intersection of Lafayette and Main. Each container will have a vendor or outdoor seating with fantastic views of the riverfront in downtown Washington. Another container will be a stage for live entertainment or music videos. A grassy area in front of the stage is a perfect spot for a blanket picnic or dancing the night away. Other events could be yoga sessions, motivational speakers, private events. Um, other towns, cities have definitely adopted this, um, that you can make these um, railroad containers look very chic, very nice, um, and provide a really nice space, um, especially in the seasonal months once we get from uh, October to, uh, or from May through October, and maybe April, depending on Missouri's weather. Um, and this, I, I like this one because they didn't even paint it. That's still just the rust on it, and it came across so cool. So it has a nice, elegant design, but yet still something that I think pays nice homage to Missouri's or to Washington's history with the railroad. And then we have what we want to do. So we've got a few storage containers running. Um, a long parallel along the side of the parking lot, and then we have a few more of those containers on top of that with a rooftop deck, tree coming out through, um, and you see the stage in the very back area with the grassy area in front of that. So this is uh, as you are walking in, 
walking down it so you can see all the way down and through that parking lot. And then as you're walking down, turned around and looking back at the entrance. Um, other storage containers that are stacked on top of each other so you can see the stage area really well. And then that's the nice grassy area. Obviously the picnic tables can be moved out and that can be a little dance stage area that you can have movie nights, um, laying out blankets in that area. Those set of stairs that you see, that take you right back up inside the building. There's even gonna be a storage um, container that comes halfway in and halfway out of the building that will also bring you inside the building as well. And then this is a side view from the other side. Um, the reason why we're doing this, um, we all also we also own the River Sirens Hotel, and we're asked all the time about there's what's there to do in Washington, and the biggest response is bars and restaurants, which is great, um, but with no bowling alley and a small arcade, Washington's in dire need of an entertaining space, um, not only for us but for all the surrounding areas and throughout Franklin County. Um, Downtown Washington Inc. is encouraged is encouraging an entertaining district in Washington, and all of their research um, proves the need is there and working very closely with Tyler King and his staff to ensure that the space is done right, that it fits the needs of the people of Washington and preserves the rich history that makes this town so great. Any questions? <laughs> I, you know, I, when I visited the Missouri and to submit something, I never thought it was big. So I'm, part of it is, where are you putting all of this? Exactly. Well, <laughs> it goes back so much farther right. than you think. Everybody says that. It's just kind of been mod podge together through the years and um yeah there's a lot of wood paneling in that <laughs> well all, sure when you remove some of that stuff from from the it's not too bad but yeah it, it goes pretty deep into the ground and then yeah sure. so which uh i think so to clarify which parts are going to be new construction i guess it's the uh, east or the west side that you were talking yeah about, that's right? really the only well, thing that's going to be but really you're adding, new that yeah. we're adding on to the building yeah. everything else is just um changing the existing space okay um that's there wow mm -hmm. yeah we can actually fit everything that wow. we want with the three separate areas the actual street uh alley uh design that we can fit all of the things that we're looking for and we do have the software here so we can e definitely show you the 3d model we can even show you the the blueprints mm -hmm. on what we have so you can kind of see the layout a little bit Chad, how many square foot is just the um, grocery store? Just the grocery store is 2,500 okay. square foot. Mm -hmm. The whole building is 20,000. Yeah. How big is it? 20,000. Oh, is it really? The whole building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's I know. So funny. It's very it's deceiving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Very deceiving. Huh. No, it's fantastic. I. I mean, I don't know how much how you could do any more in that space than what you're mm -hmm. proposing. It's a good use of the space. I, yeah, I'm blown away. I hadn't I hadn't actually seen that much of it before. It's mm -hmm. it's really cool. We are extremely excited. I, I will mention this is not the first time we've had someone request the kind of the shipping container as a building material um, hasn't come to fruition other than storage on in industrial areas, um, but we've had the you know discussion with our city attorney in the past when it comes to industrial areas that it is just that we treat it as a building material um, as long as they get a building permit and it goes through the same process as anybody else when it's fire rated tied down um, once you're over 200 square feet whether it's made of wood steel anything you have to have a foundation and so um, that has come before it is just considered another building material that they can submit because um, it's commercial they have to have the stamped and sealed plans and all that so well, like you said, I think it's like anything else. I think it's just all about how you do it and how you put it together and I, you know, and how the project is done. And you do see it a lot now in a lot of other communities mixed with historic and new and it's just, yeah, it's just, you have yeah, to look at the project. And we would like that part of the design elements. Um, we don't want to go too cheesy with the railroad theme, but we definitely would like a railroad theme in that park in terms of, you know, whether it be the railroad crossing, but yeah, to pay homage that that, Missouri River Runner runs right through here, and that's been very vital to Missouri, uh, to Washington's history. A lot of space, a lot of ideas, probably a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Any kind of timeline? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we definitely. That'll have, be the first thing people ask. I, I we, we, we definitely have timelines. Um, 
we think July 15th is going to happen for Andy's. Andy's produce. We're painting uh, tomorrow. Um, drywall is up. Um, and everything's going very well. But of course, who knows what can happen in the next couple of weeks. Um, so if that she's our number one priority, is getting Andy's produce in there. And then after that, we have a couple of other projects um, around town, and then we're gonna then dedicate everything then to this project. So next summer <laughs> is, I think, very lofty ambition, but it's still an ambition all the same. Um, if, you know, of course, once you get into those winter months again, then it gets tougher to, to get things going. But yeah, I could possibly see that. Um, I'm really excited. I spent some time in, in Europe uh, during Christmas time, and there was nothing cooler than going through Christmas markets in Europe. And I definitely can see that outdoor space um, doing, you know, roasted chestnuts and hot cocoa. That would just it would be a perfect spot for that. So that would be great if maybe that's another option. So yeah, sometime in 2023 for sure. So it's a good thing that you're. Uh, the ambition of attracting a crowd yeah. it also sounds like we might have the parking for it or we might not how what what do you own what what does the Missouri so so well, we, the, the that, Missouri, you know. yeah the entire lot minus those buildings that are there in the corner so where the trashy roots and and those buildings there but everything else right up to okay. those yeah we're, we've got all of that and that would just be parking that's not going to be as for any, right now for right yes now, we sure, don't sure. have any immediate plans to develop that okay. but um and we are and andy's uh, produce is going to go out into that parking lot that runs right along main street and 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 she'll be selling a lot of her stuff throughout there um but who Great. knows what can change that but as of right now <laughs> okay well as far as the railroad park how far south does that go um, so right to the edge of the building, um, yeah, yeah, there's those trees that are there now, um, just right to the edge of the, where the uh, Missourian ends, that's where that stage would be, and that would be the, the whole back end. Okay. Um, I, I, I didn't believe it when we had it drawn up, I'm like, there's no way this little sliver of a parking lot is going <laughs> to fit what we, but I mean, we, it, it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It, it works to hold in everything that we need and to actually create a nice space for a little grassy area um, as well. That would be really great for families. Um, Sal, refresh my memory. Um, Chad mentioned the mural. Now, we've reviewed those in the past, but are, so, do, we, do yes. we review those or how does that Here's work? Here's the thing. The code is clear about exterior alterations having to get a certificate of review including painting and murals. That does not require a building permit. So that's a little bit of a gray area in our, I mean, we can't necessarily catch someone if they go to their building with a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of the whole point is we get these conversations as early as we can mm -hmm. so that they know, hey, when you do decide on a mural, you know, come back to the commission for review and that way we can, because um, remember Angelina started it and we had them pause it and submit yeah. the rest before they finished. Mm -hmm. So. That same and thing. I was uh, vice president of the Arts Council of Washington when, and I was on that committee that did the Welcome to Washington one. So I presented those plans. I'm very used to to going down that process, and we would absolutely do the same thing. I've already reached out to the um, Four Rivers Arts, Arts Council about possibly helping with the funding with this, um, and unfortunately, that they just they have too many projects going on right now. Um, so if that's something we get done right away, or if it gets push back on the back burner a little bit, but we would definitely send that to review um, anything that we decide to go with that. But we definitely want, I, I, we really want to pay homage to the Missouri and, um, and then also Washington's past and the future. And that was the idea that I came up with, but we're open to ideas. So you talked a little bit about Andy's growing out into the parking lot there. I don't know what, I mean, I've been to the Union location a lot of outdoor stuff there, same intent. Is it stuff that will be there all the time? You talked about the doors rolling stuff in and out. Is it just a smaller scale? Do you know what they're? Yeah, um, yeah. It, in terms <clears throat> of the union location, is going to be a smaller scale than what we have here because she doesn't hardly have any space inside um, in, at that location. She kind of right. is forced to be outside. Right. Um, you know, she said she doesn't want any air conditioning. We still put one in <laughs> because we're like, okay. Um, so we'll see how, how much he does come in and out. But yeah, in the evening time and when they're closed, they're going to need to bring in um, a lot of their stuff that she doesn't even have that as an option now um, to, and doesn't have that space um, to bring in a lot of that stuff. But with this space and to have those nice accordion doors that can just push open, they can easily come in and out right. um, during the evenings. Mm -hmm. She said she's leaving most of her product out. Oh, okay.
There's a lot of nice stuff over there, but there's a lot of stuff over there. <laughs> well, and especially with us being involved as our own business, as well as renting out space, it behooves us to make sure that she has good foot traffic and that things look nice for our own business. If we were just renting the space, yeah. then we might not be as invested, but we are very invested that she is successful because then we're gonna be successful because of it. Um, I guess the only other concern, I know going to the railroad park side, I guess that's gonna be sure. the, sure. you know, probably the, the one you'll hear the most comments about right. from the public and everything. Um, one thing you might wanna do is look at, we do have a, a ordinance in the preservation section that talks a lot about um, scale and you know not necessarily materials all have to match everything but trying to keep the same scale that mm -hmm. we don't have something that's super overpowering on that corner but still pays respect to the rest of the downtown because I know there's a lot of people that have invested a lot of money in mm -hmm. and uh, you know adjacent properties so uh, might be something just to look at a little bit I guess the other comment too is is there gonna be a way to to maybe close that off so it doesn't become a playground for absolutely a bunch of kids and yeah um, we're gonna be doing a fence along that entire space and then where the entrance where uh, is it will be a gate um, yeah we're not gonna want teenagers there at 2 in the morning That's, you know yeah. tearing up our stuff um, so yeah there's there's a plan for for that I think we've already shared it but the color scheme that we have for our guideline book that Okay. Yeah, I think if you guys don't have it, we can share it as well okay, for, yeah. I know, I, I don't know, you didn't mention finalizing the colors of those mm -hmm. of those yet, so we can share that. I have one in the back, I can give you one. Okay. Um, yeah, and in terms of height, um, we had just, you know, discussed doing one um, container that would be on its side, but that would be a stairwell that would get them to, to, other, to other ones, so, um, but that was part of those pictures, but like I said, Pull any of those back up if you want to see what that would look like but that's something that we'll definitely take into consideration yeah that's a good thought the design guidelines do have a lot of just samples of materials and things in it that allow things to blend in that mm -hmm. are a good resource just to have mm -hmm. any other comments anybody in the crowd have any comments um, then what I do, I guess, is I'll um, look for a motion for the re to uh, give a review for the 14 West Main Street East End, I guess I'll say it, <laughs> for a certificate of review. I'll make a motion to issue the certificate of review for the East End of the project. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And then really the, the next thing there was kind of what we discussed was the west side of it. So. Yeah, there is nothing to vote on for that tonight. Um, sorry, let me get this out. Uh, we will, obviously they'll have to come back for building permits and all that for the shipping containers and we'll have final renderings at that point. Okay. Okay. Well, we thank you all for, for your presentation. It was, it was a good presentation to understand what you're trying to do with the whole whole block there so it's great yeah thank you thank you <laughs> um next item under new business is uh 500 east 6th street um jamie maybe you can kind of inform us what that was about you kind of yeah. sent us an email out yeah diane snyder came in and she said okay <laughs> got one side of my house it's 150 years old it's all brick but there's one side where the kitchen has been expanded through the many years internally you can see the expansion there's brick walls there's brick walls and then uh, when they finally expand it at one point it appears that there's asbestos underneath and then there's siding white vinyl siding which is probably 40 or 50 years old pretty crummy looking, <laughs> needs to be repaired. And before I go down the road and make some major errors, I just wanted some <laughs> guidance from somebody about what to put up there aesthetically that would look pleasing, but still kind of fall in the realm of that old of a house, which is in Basora. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
first time I mar met Mark Houseman, he said, oh, you live in Basora. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is Basora. And it's, um, it's, yeah, there it is. So the and they're, they're, I'm sorry. The siding is more around the, the side and the back? Is that No, it's on the side. It's on the neighbor's side. I'm on a corner, okay. and it's on the, the, um, other side. the side that faces the neighbors. Okay. okay. Oh, sorry. And I, I was looking today, and there's some other areas where the roof line has been expanded. The house was expanded a couple of times internally. And with the roof line, the way they expanded it, there's some of that white vinyl siding up there, too. And I want to get rid of all of it. It looks <laughs> pretty you. tacky, and it's, it's starting to plate and break because mm. it's so old. Mm. So I'm just kind of looking for some guidelines. Mm. There you oh, go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's about 30 feet long. Um, the whole thing, but there's a side porch where you can see mm -hmm. the cutout. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, you know, um, I was invited to come for ideas. <laughs> well, I think Steve so, is our I mean, wealth of knowledge know, here as far as. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I know that, you know, I could do brick, I could do hardy board, I could do siding, I could do, you know, all sorts of other things, but just kind yeah. of some direction so that I'm not making a huge mistake. I think in the past, a lot of times we've recommended going with the, the hardy board. Hardy and since board. that is an addition, you don't, mm -hmm. sometimes you wanted a different material. So it does show the, yeah. the, the progression of that property. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. In, internally, you can see the progression. The, it's got the original hardwood floors and you can see where they stopped and started and started. There have been three renditions on that kitchen. So someone like Hardy Board? Yeah, we've we've recommended that on a lot of Absolutely. the projects. Would you do just straight across or would you do, I mean, I know that there's some of those shells. So you think originally that was asbestos? I think, no, I think there's asbestos underneath. underneath it, okay. I don't know what originally was. I have not gone down that far. Okay. Uh, but there's a piece on the back that the, um, the trim has come off and you can see um, that asbestos. I'm pretty sure it's asbestos, but that's as far as I've gone. I mean, going with like a lap siding would be pretty accurate historically and everything. So. Okay, so some kind of hardy board or some kind of lap mm -hmm. siding like that would be my, my best bet. I were you, th you had mentioned a design, were you thinking about the scallop yeah, design? Yeah, uh, well, I, I don't know. You know yeah. I just was wondering, yeah. you know, like Is that just drive, to get some direction. Drive down here to um, Second and Jefferson mm -hmm. in the cabin that's on the corner there. Uh, that, that's all wood siding, but you'll notice that it's siding to a certain point and then the scallops oh, okay. up okay. above there. Yeah. Go take a look sure at that. I wanted to do that because I'm not real sure where the break point is. Right. But I just needed some direction to, you know. Hardy board is awesome. Okay, so hardy board well, would be my best Yeah, bet. I mean, even Andy's new stuff, brick on the front and hardy board on the right. back in a lot yeah. of cases. I was going to say that's in one. So it's been, very I'm much. Sorry, what, sir? Um, the new development, so Ryan River down here that Andy Understall's built is um, brick on the front and it's, you know, a lap hardy board type siding on the, on the back. Any of, if you go down to market and uh, main and market hang a left and look at anything that's brick on the front down there and okay, pretty much okay, okay, okay. you're going to find somewhere on there where you'll find that hardy board too. <clears throat> I'm be more comfortable with hardy board than vinyl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks so thank much. You. So hardy board be my bed. Well, okay. thank you for coming thank in. Thank you. Thanks for coming nice in. Nice little house. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, We'll move on to old business. Sal, do you know? Kind of run through here. I don't have anything new. Um, we have not spent any additional money. However, um, there was a donation from um, the dispensary um, to the city just uh, for future projects. And it, I think it still has to go through council, but one of the proposals for that money is for $5,000 is to finish the improvements to the um, his, the city cemetery because oh. we got the sign there but we never got the <coughs> educational aspect of it. It was like another $1,200 and mm. we didn't have that and so we were going to propose uh, bringing that to council to allocate that donation to, to pay for those improvements um, because if you remember we 
this committee voted to put money towards that, but it didn't necessarily go to the historic side, it went to the sign. So I was like, I don't necessarily, if we wanna go back and ask for more money. So we thought that would be good allocation. So mm -hmm. um, budgetary, that's really the only thing that we're looking at, so. I think that'd be a great idea, because yeah. I think we tried to kind of get the ball rolling on that project and to get, like you said, get the historical aspect out there was kind of the goal from the beginning. So. And Mark Hausman actually wrote us a really nice like mock-up of what we'd actually put on the pedestal sign um, or on the, um, the historic sign and so uh, we have that still Marlin has that um, and we got a bid from Ziglin for about 1200 and we looked um, that was pretty much what we paid um, even at the time for the other ones around town as well so it hasn't changed much from there That'd be great. yeah it'd be great to use it especially if Mark put it together I mean we yeah he got he found pictures of some uh, Civil War um, uh, soldiers that were buried there, so he dug some up and yeah, he was he was good. Cool. So. Okay. Um. Other than that, I know the Calvin's still on here, and um, I don't have an update. They had moved forward with the roof replacement. A couple, it, at, even at, since our last meeting in May, there was the crane was there one week and making some changes on the roof, so yeah, per permit's still open, so. Now Tyler's reached out as well, he hasn't heard any specific update, but um, they were planning on applying for the federal tax credits, which would go above and beyond any of our requirements. They have to approve every individual change you do to the inside, so, we'll see. Okay, have any other business? Um, I just want to make it known that uh, the foundation, the Historic Washington Foundation, we're finished with our projects. Um, the farmer's market building has been completely retuck pointed and uh, painted. The signs are back up. Uh, so that's finished. And the post office, we are, fin everything's been finished as far as the tuck pointing. And we're working uh, with a painter to finish painting some of the windows. So both buildings should be back in shape for the rest for another 100 years let's say are you putting a new sign at the post office for downtown inc we're looking at it okay <coughs> nothing's been okay i I, th I thought i'd heard that but i hadn't yeah. seen it so okay yeah and that reminds me we did um the uh waterworks building should be done by well the the general contractor's work should be done by about the it, well, I'd say the second week of July. Second week of July, okay. But then the tenants still got work to do right. inside after. But the outside yeah. work that's... Yeah, they've... They, I think today they started putting some of the, the new windows in on the They're inside. In. Good. Um, the, the new windows came in yeah. Wednesday and they were in within a day. Yeah. And then uh, they've been working to do... They've redone all the uh, sidewalks down there. Is that all of the windows already? No, we're, we only oh, replaced the ones okay. on the east side. Um, <laughs> we, we struggled with the budget, so. Yeah. Um, those, those windows were in the worst condition. The ones um, that you could basically move out of there? Yeah, they, <laughs> you could stick your finger through some of the glass in there. Yeah. There wasn't glass, so. Um, a lot of the stuff on the west end is they just went in and uh, worked on the windows, patched them, repainted them. But the ones that we are replacing are all here. Yes. yes. That's earlier than I thought I had heard. I thought well, we no, be that's, in July that's about also. right. It was, okay. I think it came in a few days early, but um, but they're getting close. Um, if you look inside, it'll kind of look unfinished yet, but the tenant's doing a lot of the, the finish work on, on the inside. So. Well, the, the touching up and the painting I thought looked great. They yeah. put that color back on there and all those details. Um, mm -hmm. And Wayne let us know that they're going to add some ground lighting there up to that, so very similar to what we have at City Hall that lights up the building directly. Yeah, so when um, you come down Jefferson Street, the whole front of it will be lit. Nice. I think it'll, it'll look really nice. Yeah. So. Any update on the depot? Uh, we're supposed to go out to bid July. Darren is back there on his phone. Um, I think July 7th, and then they're <coughs> due July 17th, or maybe that was too quick to turn around, but bids are due to be in in July. Um, and then we'll get the, the numbers out and hopefully select someone and move forward. So, tenant is still eager to move in. 
So. Or, so it's vacant right now? Yes, yep. It's been vacant since Pappy's moved out. Um, it would have not have passed inspection. Does, uh, does anything change on the outside? No, um, there is gonna be some new gooseneck lighting. Um, actually, I take it back. They did end up adding two windows to the north side on the river, so they will have to go through. Historic, it will have to come to this board. So said, once we get the bids in, we'll submit those plans. That just got painted a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For us, mm -hmm. um, okay. And we have not really decided what to do with the loading dock yet. That's right now that's an add-on in the bid package to replace it with a concrete and actually fence it in to have a real deck out there. Um, but again, with the budget, that is an add-on right now, so. Okay. All right, if there's nothing else, the uh, next scheduled meeting is uh, Monday, August 15th at six o'clock. I'll accept a motion to adjourn. I'll motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you guys for coming and apologies for Jamie and I confusing you. I was, <laughs> I know, I had a conference at the lake and I think I had sent out a correction email before I saw her email, so there was a lot of contradictions on when this meeting was, so. But we got you here.